Hello everybody, in this video we're gonna talk about how to write an indirect proof for geometry. So it's kind of a three-step process. Step number one says identify the statement you want to prove, and then we're going to assume temporarily that this statement is false by assuming that its opposite is true. Step two, we're gonna reason logically until we reach a contradiction. Um, and then at that point, we're gonna state that the desired conclusion must be true because the contradiction pr proves the temporary assumption false. Okay, so let's look at an example of what this would look like. So we have a diagram given to us. Uh, looks like two parallel lines cut by a transversal, but the given information tells us that line A is not parallel to line B. So now we wanna prove that angle one and angle five are not congruent. So to start off, we're going to assume that the opposite is true. So we're gonna say, we want to assume temporarily that angle one is congruent to angle five, okay? So if we do that, now if angle one and angle five are congruent, those two angles are called corresponding angles. So now we can say by the converse of the corresponding angles theorem, lines A and B should be parallel. Okay? So if we have angle one and angle five, if they are congruent, then that means that the corresponding angles are congruent so that the lines are parallel. Okay, well now we've proved that the lines are parallel. Well, that contradicts the given information. So now we're gonna write that. So this contradicts the given information. Okay. Which means our assumption is false. Okay, so one and five can't be congruent because if they're congruent, then the lines are parallel and that contradicts our given information. So therefore, angle one is not congruent to angle five, okay? And that's how you write an indirect proof. So indirect proofs or indirect reasoning can be used in real life all the time. Um, a good example would be um, in a courtroom, right? So if somebody's accused of a crime that was committed, let's say in Chicago, uh, but the lawyer says, hey, at, at the time of the crime, my, my, my client was actually in Seattle. So the, the lawyer could say, okay, let's assume temporarily that my client is guilty. Well, if my client's guilty, that means they had to be in Chicago at the time of the crime. Well, they weren't in Chicago, they were in Seattle at the, at the time of the crime. So therefore my client cannot be guilty, okay? So that's how you write an indirect proof and use indirect reasoning.